A former sub-postmaster says it's disgusting that the post office's chief lawyer knew she could have been innocent for eight years before her conviction was overturned. Alison Hall's name was finally cleared in 2021, ten years after she was wrongly convicted. But in the latest of our reports from the post office tapes, ITV News can reveal that in 2013, the post office's top lawyer was told her case and many others could have been unsafe convictions. Why, Miss Hall asked us, did the post office not bother to share that information with her? When she spoke to our investigations editor, Daniel Hewitt. For Alison Hall, not even home is haven from the horrors inflicted by the Horizon scandal. A single step outside is a daily reminder of the post office next door that was taken from her. I just shut down for a bit. It was just heartbreaking. She was convicted in 2011 after £15,000 went missing from her branch account. She knew she was innocent, but facing a charge of theft, relented to pressure from the post office to plead guilty to false accounting. They said that if I plead guilty to false accounting, then I'd be out of court that day and it wouldn't go to trial. I was scared what could have happened, you know, leaving my family and going to prison. Alison had to wait until 2021 for an overturned conviction, but a secret recording obtained by ITV News of a meeting in December 2013 between the post office's top lawyer Chris Ojard and independent investigators from Second Sight, Ron Warmington and Ian Henderson, reveals they warned the post office of major concerns with Alison's conviction. When you get to the Alison Hall case, and the key question is going to be, why did the investigation team proceed to a prosecution for false accounting when the underlying cause for that, without much doubt, was that she got in a complete mess over uh, scratch cards when Paul knew that there was a huge problem with reconciliation of scratch cards. And yet it doesn't seem that either the investigation team and the prosecution team knew that, or if they knew about it, they didn't cut her any slack because of it. And it's really serious because it's potentially an unsafe conviction. We are consistently seeing prosecutions that are focused on the false um, accounting sort of issue with no regard for actually identifying what has, what has caused the deficiency in, in the first place. Uh, it is undoubtedly the case that there is a lot of, you know, a lot of individual distress. In West Yorkshire, distress doesn't come close. You just think, disgusting. Why weren't I told? My poor mum passed away before she knew... I was innocent and that I got conviction overturned and she had known before she passed away that this could have all been cleared up and it hasn't. And it wasn't just Alison's case. The investigators tell the post office it has wrongly pressurised others into guilty pleas. In many cases there was the threat of a theft charge which was lifted as part of a deal, a sort of courtroom steps deal, where the, the condition was we won't pursue the theft charge by the way, we wouldn't have had the information or the evidence to, to, to win anyway. As long as you plead guilty to the false accounting and as long as you refrain from saying anything in your defence to do with the criticism of Horizon. Mr Ojard is also told the post office have potentially misled the courts by presuming sub-postmasters were guilty without gathering evidence. That is ever so serious because what that meant is that Paul proceeded to criminal prosecution without the underlying factors having been investigated. Now, that is bloody serious because it would be a criminal offence to not yield up to the defence evidence that might undermine the prosecution. Paul has acted, basically, in a way that it could be accused of having misled the courts. It's as serious as that, Chris. My focus is on dealing with the, each case as it comes through. So yep. the macro, macro issues are, are another, another pot. They're, they're not in my pot. They belong to other parts of the organisation and, and I can feed through... Uh, you know, some of the thoughts on this call uh, in, into that portal. We don't know exactly what Chris Ojar did after this meeting or who he told about it. What we do know is that convictions did not begin being overturned for another seven years in 2020. And four months after this meeting, post office bosses secretly decided to sack Second Sight and take over the investigation itself. Chris Ojar left the post office in 2015. These recordings come too late for those who lost everything. They now hope time will soon be up for those who took it away.
done, as you say, too late for so many. But what's been yeah. the reaction to these latest revelations? Well, one MP, the former chair of the Business and Trade Committee, uh, Darren Jones, today said our findings over the past few nights seem to him to be the definition of a cover-up. A spokes office spokesman told us we remain fully focused on getting to the truth of what happened and supporting the statutory public inquiry, which is chaired by a judge with the power to question witnesses under oath and is therefore best placed to help achieve this. A spokesperson for Chris Ojard, who was at the post office for 16 months before standing down as general counsel, uh, said Chris has been called as a witness to the inquiry and fully supports its role, but whilst the process is ongoing, he's unable to comment further. And um, second site investigators said they cannot comment as they have been de designated core participants of the ongoing inquiry and have undertaken confidentiality agreements. That inquiry um, will restart again next week.